Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're playing as Reichskommissariat Norwegen. Why? Because how many other people have played as Norway in TNO? But that lied to the Germanic Empire. The northernmost tip of the gross Germanic Reich, the Reichskommissariat Norwegen, is the proverbial light of Germania's ever-powerful fiefdom. Under the skillful administration of Reichskommissar Josef Terboven and Minister of President Gulbren Lunda, the Norwegian nation-state is in far more favorable economic and social position than prior to our war. Our stability is proof enough that for our masters of the superiority of the Nordic Aryan race, for we have become an important cog, or clog, and the machine of the Reich and without us, the GGR is nothing. We are their greatest ideological and economic asset. A very cool flag, and led by some guy named Joseph. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. And let's take a look. So, literacy is slowly going down. Let's see, what else, do we, what else do we have here? Research facilities being the same. Agriculture, poverty is slowly getting worse. Uh, industrial experience is getting worse as well. So, it's not great, but it could be a lot worse. Tackling civil disobedience within Norway. Enforcing German literacy. The future of the working class. I kind of want to do the working class. I want to see if they can get them any sort of improvements. Uh, close the Swedish border. Adva disadvantage in the disobedient. Tracking when you're on and off. Maintain agricultural dominance. Revive the cities. Or shield of famine from farms to parks. It's not bad. This is the future of the working class for centuries. The Norwegian working class has been made up of primarily by those who are more agriculturally inclined, as a Garian traditionalist thought has permeated throughout these ancient Nordic plains for the time untold. However, our continued adherence to traditionalist economic principles has left Reichskommissariat Norwegen suffering from a severe lack of industry. Yet, regardless of thought, some pragmatic government officials have suggested our administration begin training the latest generation of farmers to adapt to more mechanical methods of production, ultimately integrating them into the potential future industrial complexes that may one day dominate Norway's landscape. However, many traditionalists within the government have noted that the abandonment of Agarian-based working class alignments is a direct betrayal of the national, uh, <clears throat> national socialist ideology, thus resulting in significant resistance from our loyal rural constituents. But ultimately, neither side has yet yielded to the other. Reichskommissar Novigen, the Northern Darkness. Stretching into the distant north, far beyond the metropole of the Reich lies its northern outpost, Reichskommissar at Norwegen, the dark highways of the Autobahn cutting through its picturesque fjord valleys. Secured in the 1940s, a protectorate against British invasion by a combined, a vast combined arms operation, oh boy, Bormann, um, by the Wehrmacht, the control of the Kingdom of Norway would prove a persistent headache for the German government both during and after the war. Unlike the more cooperative cousins in Denmark, Norway, Norwegian civilians and military alike proved far less apathetic to the German intervention even in the early years of the occupation, a problem compounded by the constant, consistent failure of the Wehrmacht to capture the king in the cabinet in 1940, the royal family and leading politicians escaping the remnants of their navy to Scotland. Without anyone to sign a formal surrender, the unstable military administration of von Valkenhorst would prove un unable to effectively cope with the continued civil disobedience and increasing partisan and commando activity from the locals. The situation was a com compromised government with a power-sharing agreement with the judicial, executive, and later legislative branches of the government controlled by the native National Unity Party, led by Minister President Vid Kuhn Quisling. The Reich's Commissar is supposed to see over oversee Norway's eventual integration into the Reich. Joseph Terboven was much to his chagrin left with little power besides that of the veto and the ability to pass executive orders. After the warp, Therboven was able to leverage Reichskommissariat's Norwegian's con contribution to the German nuclear program and solidifying, solidifying his position. But Germanization was still limited due to the native parliament, the Stortung, uh, ousting Quisling for his lies about the Germans withdrawing after the war and failure to secure the Kola Peninsula for the Norwegians in the peace settlement. A few short-lived minister presidents later, the, the NS coalesced under the round the nuke Reichsforer, Goldbrand Lunde, the past gives way to the present. Very cool. A little bit, a bit about us, but we have extended occupation. We have a millorg. We have agriculture de devolution, and oh boy, and then we have civilian budget boots and military austerity. But the outposts of bondage. For 20 years, the shaky government has tried its best to turn Norway into a model colony, led by an equally shaky triumvirate consisting of Thorboven, the increasingly disloyal nationalist Goldbrand Lund, and the brutal police chief Jonas Lai. Lai is a useful tool for Thorboven to contain the popularity and resentment of Lund, since the executive branch would be seriously hampered without a police force to enforce her edicts. However, with mounting challenges from the moderate for reformer and Agarian firebrand Pit Per Borten, the traditional rural heartland of Lund's support is rooted in its eroding. In, in, its, in is eroding, and it feels pressure to take an increasingly hardline stance against the Germans he secretly loathes. Should the German garrison be forced to withdraw, if it, it is uncertain if Lai or Lee could maintain the status quo even with brute force, and it is even less certain if Lunda would 
even be bothered to try to maintain a servile facade without the threat of the garrison. The Germans have made multiple attempts to assassinate him over the years as an intervention against his hearkening back to the national stage of the party, but always failed and the status quo restored, giving Lunda a firm grip of what power remains to him. Should a crisis emerge between the lives of national socialists, true believers, and Bolton's local nationalists, there's no telling if Bolton might take or make a move to cement his own power or position as a Reichsführer for NS or worse. The partisans of the Milorg military organization could make a play of their own to kick down the feet under the collaboration government. A remnant of old Norway and at the at the time or the time had to catch as an adult the line prepares. The model colony is very much a house of cards, one watched with increasing worry by the many German settlers in the region like the Thrandheim area as the winds of change pick up in Germania. All three factions must keep an eye on the event of a disaster. In the event of disaster. Who will eventually rule Norway remains to be seen. The present gives way to the future. And as you can see, we have no decisions, which is kind of unfortunate, but we're going to enforce German literacy. Nah. Mandatory transportation. To truly embrace national socialist philosophy, we must continue to discourage any form of individualism in our citizenry. As a concept, the individual poses a great risk to the collective. Although many seem, may seem that this ever so slightly overkill even for a regime, the usual personal transportation is a danger to the bot states, yeah, to the stability of the collective, therefore it must be banned. Furthermore, by enforcing the usage of governmental transportation of places to work, it will increase the state's cap capability to observe its citizens, thus potentially allowing for us to gain more influence over the minds of our countrymen, the leftovers. Det Detective Olsen, scan in the basement with the usual scowl, sucking c deeply on a cigarette. Mmm, nicotine. The room was like an artifact, frozen in time. Two half-empty mugs of coffee sat on the table. A few stained documents were scattered across the floor. The detective glanced at the torn map of Oslo pressed against the far wall. It stared back mockingly. Smoke streamed out of Olsen's nose. How much of this evidence had been deliberately left behind was yet to be discovered. It would be the first time these terrorists had planted misleading traps in their abandoned hideouts. Something, though, caught his eye. Olsen glanced down at the scrap of paper caught under his boot, a leaflet. He bent down and plucked it up, drawing it close to his bloodshot eyes. Two words were imposed upon a black and white picture of Norwegians celebrating the streets. M.A.I. 17. Olsen sighed heavily. The National Day of Celebration. The picture would be from 1939 before the Germans banned that tradition. Under the jubilant image was a declaration for... The detective took the cigarette out of his mouth and shook his head. Even he had a felt a pang of longing. Was it any surprise Milorg was so attractive to the common citizen? Some memories to just will never fade. And right now, we are trying to build up some civvies, but we have no civvies to use. And right now, we actually are cutting down our debt, even though we have no debt. Um, people expect 95% of our civ number of civilian and military factories to produce consumer goods. This need is filled by civilian factories only, where we can use negative one for training. Well, that's not good. But military factories destroyed. In the final hours of last night, a brutal firefight broke out as one of our, at mil one of our military bases. Or factories, assailants massacred the guards and penetrated the fa factory security, planting several explosives before fleeing the scene. Witnesses have spoken of a blossom of fire ranging against the starry night sky in the early hours, hours of the morning, and our experts believe at least 10 sec security personnel were killed. We have analyzed the bodies of a few perpetrators gunned down in the initial ambush, and the forensic teams have identified them as members of the Milorg Resistance Organization. The authorities are condemning this vile act and have vowed to ramp up their efforts against Milorg, which will remain a major threat as long as they continue to sabotage our military production. Those bad word terrorists. We don't like terrorists. No, but mandatory transportation followed with the Norwegian economy. The economy, that invisible force of nature, has not been overly generous to Norway. Though prospecting for natural resources continues apace, and by far the most dominant job sector in the Reichs Commissariat is agriculture. Yet even in this, in this, the Norwegians are not blessed as short growing periods and mediocre amounts of arable land hinder efforts at expanding this area of economic potential. So, while Scandinavia will never rival the fertile plains of the Reichs Commissariat Ukraine for sheer output, it is sufficient to feed our population and to keep the majority of Norwegians employed. Our economy has not been stagnant, however, and as of late has been, sh in fact, shown the first transformations into a diversifying market. Due to the needs of the Reich Commissariat, as well as the evolution of Norway into a more modern uh, nation, has resulted in increased demands for industrial potential and goods. Our cities have continued to grow in part to the increasing rise in industrial jobs and careers available, and our respectable shipbuilding industry is now solidified. Regardless, the fact remains that Norway exports its value to the Reich and Europe, and efforts should be taken to increase the production and growth of the Scandinavian Peninsula where possible. Another day, another Reichsmark. I love making some money. Tracking when you're on and off, where it happens. Oh, infrastructure attacked. Insurgents have struck once again last night. Resistance members attacked some of our vital infrastructure with explosive devices in an attempt to stoke up fear and resentment. Our experts believe the perpetrators to be the Middle Orc Terrorist Group, which is infamous for attacking transportation systems and communication networks throughout Norway. The authorities are condemning this vile act and have remained to ramp up their activities against Middle Orc, which remains a threat to us as long as they continue to spark chaos by destroying Norway's infrastructure. Those darn terrorists. 
What happened? Where, where it happens? We are at a significant crossroads in history, a change in policy which may affect our government for decades to come. Despite our somewhat positive economic situation, Rex Commissar Norvegian has found itself suffering from a lack of industry, especially when compared to our fellow Unity Pact member states. It's been noted that we will eventually lose our economic rel uh, relative economic power in the Unity Pact if we refuse to adapt to the changing times. Yet for centuries, Norway's economy has been built on agrarianism, with generations being brought up as farmers rather than industrial workers, which may result in potential social disunity if we place greater emphasis on industry. However, we are sure that whatever decision we shall take will ultimately be a positive for Norway. Hmm, I would love to do this one because I want more agricultural stuff. Our shield to famine, but revive the cities from farms to parks. Oh boy. Hmm. This seems like, okay, so with this one, regu regular public meetings to allow public meetings, sounds like we're going to maybe liberalize slightly more, and maybe we want to go down that way, but infrastructure attack, if you like to read about that again, please go right ahead. This happens in Trondelag. Hmm. Never been to Norway. I'm not Norwegian at all, as far as I know, but cool. Tackling civil disobedience. Two decades following the establishment and legitimization of a regime from those whom resist our mandate of governance continue to cause issues for society as a whole, regardless of the continually favorable social and economic situation the state finds itself in. Those who foolishly wish to disrupt the workable authoritative model of the Führer Principe have begun an unexpected and ferocious campaign of disobedience and passive resistance against governing powers of beat. As a result, methods of countering said rise in disobedient pacifism will be enacted by the state to protect with the majority whom wisely align with their national goals. Very cool. And industry in the Reichs Commissariat in the Begin. And I'll be honest here, you don't know this. You can't tell at all. By the time of me recording this, I might have a cat on my lap, just sleeping on my lap. Industry, though. Norwegian farming traditions span back millennia into the Iron Age, and to this day have remained a central staple of Norway's life and culture, in force or otherwise. The unending tide of years has changed the face of Norway, however, and many of our needs and desires have long since evolved from those of our farm steeding ancestors. Our cities are growing at a, fast, at a pace not seen before in history, and with them come the fuel they need to continue. Planes, trains, auto, radio sets, and even TVs have all become expected sites of the urban citizenry as opposed to curious luxuries, unfortunately. The nation is of yet lacks the industries required to build our own, and as such we end up paying large sums of money for imports from across the Einheits path. Perhaps a tipping point has been reached, however. Regarding the Norwegian economy, we possess a large and dedicated workforce throughout the nation, but they are currently relegated to the fields of and livestock and agriculture. Norwegian farming, while competitive within the continent, cannot match it cannot match it in output and has a sense in giving us the opportunity to re-specialize our economy. We can shift our focus on growing a functional and healthy section of light and heavy industry to compete with Germany and drive down costs and consumer goods, or we can deepen our agricultural supremacy and focus on exporting the natural goods we already produce to packed nations for profit. But both will continue to grow as our economy grows regardless, but embracing one will give it the foundation it needs for Norway to become a cornerstone of the European market. Decisions, decisions, which we will take. On the topic of illegal media, though. Uh, no, we're going to go to revive the cities first. Whilst the countryside has thrived under the, under the agrarian economic model which we have followed for decades, our cities have regrettably suffered due to our adherence to the past traditions, yet in our changing world we mustn't fall behind. Therefore, like the majority of the Unity Pact, we must begin a full-scale program of re revitalization in our major cities, expanding our industrial capacity or capabilities and maintaining our positive economic situation inside the Unity Pact. Cool. Now, let me see. Before these guys die off... Oh, maybe they already did. Ming Jiang. Do they have focus tree? They do have a focus tree, huh? Beg Japan. Slash and burn. Well, looks like they won, but they're fighting the Revolutionary Council. That's kind of cool. Ah, uh, Russia. It's, it's so much fun to play Russia, but... I'll be honest, like... I'm trying to find more nations that have unique focus trees in TNO. I mean, obviously, the, the big three in my mind are obviously Germany. The United States. As well as just all of Russia. Other than that, yeah, you have Japan, you have Italy... And you have the Republic of China, which I have not done yet, not yet done, but I'm just looking around for countries with this unique focus use that I've not done yet, though. But civil disobedience within Norway once we click on Revive the Cities. As it, every German bureaucrat knows, with the establishment of a Reichskommissar comes an explosion of resistance, both peaceful and violent. It is the duty of the administrators to swiftly and competently remove such threats by any means necessary. Some resistance movements burn brightly for a few years before being extinguished forever, whilst others inflict more damage to themselves and their targets as they crumble into infighting. The same cannot be said of Milorg. Milorg, that name has sparked fear, confusion, and fury among the German occupiers of the Reichskommissar at Navigan for the last two decades. Like a cluster of wasps, they danced around us and invaded our swipes, swooping in to sting us over and over when we least expected. Once an unorganized cluster of individuals, Milorg now boasts a large network of dedicated soldiers, each and every one fueled with a burning hatred for the German and a determination to drag the nation back into the democratic degeneracy since 1941. 
This organization disrupted their supply lines, sabotaged their intelligence, and raided their stockpiles. Enemies of the state have been set free from prison and given either a free pass into Sweden or a weapon to continue the fight. Good men, both German and Norwegian, have been murdered in cold blood, with no regard spared for any innocent, innocents killed along the way. Melorg is a monstrous organization that cares little for the consequences of collateral damage. Many civilian Norwegians have been gunned down and blown up by these creatures, and yet Melorg continues to aspire the, the front of the masses due to their immense propaganda efforts. From pamphlets and posters to pirate radio broadcasts and secret rallies, these rebels will stop at nothing to manipulate the people to the pathetic cause. If these pests are not wiped out soon, they may snowball into the threat we we could we never could have expected all those years ago. We should crush them like the bugs they are. And from farms to parks? Sure, why not? With the abandonment of our emphasis on agrarian economic policies, the question of what should occur to the vast amount of farms which dot the map of Rex Commissariat Novigen has been in debate. At this current time, it's more likely that we should convert these farms into recreational parks for the people of a proud nation. Regardless of industrialization, we must ensure that Norway's natural beauty is protected and conserved, as we must ensure that the quality of our life for our citizens remains one of the highest in all of the Unity Pact. Uh, any eco fascism, I guess, for the Norwegians? Sure, why not? We're a bunch of fascists here, national social daddyists. Conservative Democrats, as well as military factory destroyed again. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Well, that sucks. And we've got some improved anti air, though. Not bad. Oh, look at that. We got a lot of research done. I love it. We can't afford to do anything, though, except make guns or tanks. Or, no, just guns. That's it. Alright, what do we have here? Construction. Not bad, not bad. It's not quite that time yet. Do we? Uh, you know, we'll do that one anyways, because we can. Research-wise, 1970, not bad. And we did attrition planning instead of offensive strategy, because even though we have two motorized and mountaineer and like nine other infantry divisions, this is what we can kind of afford. Not very much. I'm not showing you anything here yet. Um, we're not even making any divisions just because, well, we have no manpower, as you can see from the top. And we cannot train new divisions, and but we do have a cup of coffee here. Ten combat width with engineers, and this is the... Oh, you actually do have IFEs. Oh, I didn't know that. We can't edit any of this stuff, which kind of sucks, but whatever. From Farms and Parks. Um, so yeah, I have set up my infantry just to set up, like, around the ports, you know, just in case. Especially Goring, let's say, would win the Civil War. Which hopefully he doesn't. I'm going to go with Ambusher, because we all want more max entrenchment. And then we have, like I said, two motorized and a Mountaineer. Just, they're just going to hang out, for now. And we're led by Edward Dietl, which sounds very familiar. I'm going to go with Defensive. But once we get enough command power for that... From par farms to parks, ported to Germany. As expected, the authorities in Germany have requested we send a detailed report to them with regard to our current economic direction and if we have made any changes or how, or not to our current economic plan. Given how much we do not desire to make an enemy of our masters, we will report all economic actions we've taken to the fatherland to ensure that a lapse in diplomatic cordiality does not occur, thereby safeguarding our relationship with the Reich whilst keeping them informed, which is essential, especially important to Germania given their future plans for Reich's Commissar Nivigan's full integration in the GGR. We're just preparing them for uh, integration. That's all. That's all we're doing. And then tracking when you're on and off. Let's do this one. Illegal media has always been an issue facing the GGR and its Reich's Commissariat, as those whom did dislike a regime continue to pointlessly spread anti-government propaganda, simply attempting to diminish our power and weaken social cohesion. In these trying times, we mustn't allow anyone to negatively impact society via the spread of illicit media. Therefore, with regard to the topic of illegal media, we must devote a greater number of resources to combating the spread of these highly dangerous and damaging pieces of media for the sake of the state. Let me see. Austin. I know Austin... Like, is going to eventually get a unique focus tree. So maybe I should play this group. Even though I know they explode eventually. Does... <sighs> Moscovine does not have a unique focus tree. Uh, and neither does Ukraine. Caucus? Caucus, please? Uniqueness? No? Oh, you are. Man, he's got some scars. Oh, baby. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun when Turkey gets their own thing, too. Oh, look, Mr. Happy, Mr. Happy Hitler. He's like, whoa, where am I? Very cool. And then we shall do search the underground. Grain, gain traction on crackdowns, redistribute the forces. Oh, what is this? Uh, or doing Goebbels proud. Public education with elite only. Oh, that's not, not good. Redistribute the forces. Find more fitting cost. Army pressure. Oh, I won't go that way. As much as I love to please Daddy Goebbels, I think we want to redistribute the forces. In order to successfully strike against this illicit media being imported into our nation, it has been suggested we must redistribute our forces so that we can better monitor what is being imported into Reich's Commissariat Novigen from abroad. It has been determined that the majority of said illicit materials seem to have been brought in from abroad, not from the nation-state itself. Thereby, we can only hope that our increased presence in the areas which 
with which illicit materials are smuggled through will lessen their imports into our nation. Those darn terrorists, scum. I'd love to be able to build, though. I would love to be able to build. Can we build roads? No, we can't. Oh, man, that sucks. But how's the budget looking? Cut, spend. Hey, 1.7 billion. Not bad. We have no debt, no interest on the debt, and 3% annual GDP growth. Not bad. Not bad. Median rock score must be right in a vegan. Yeah, we'll read about that as soon as we can do this one. There's been a change in the wind, and all in Norway can feel which way it's blowing. It's with a gradual feeling at first, but ever so slightly has built force and speed, and now threatens to sweep, us, sweep up the entire German experiment with them. Where before Norwegians could be seen giving a crisp German salute to members of the administration or the garrison, you are now lucky to even see a curt nod. The youth vandalizing tarnished storefronts of the most loyal collaborators and a few in the country, community try to bring them to account. Worst of all, public opposition and vocal protests have been developing in earnest for the first time since the worst years of the Reichskommissariat. Naturally, investigations and a few interrogations quickly made it clear the source of this growing discontent for all to see. The mill org infiltrated urban areas and communities and disseminated their viral propaganda in the form of conversion, physical flyers, and even song. Further field in the more rural areas, garrisons only have limited control of the regions, and a concerning number of physical confrontations are being reported. The average citizen is starting to reconsider who they think their true savior is. The wind cannot blow down a mountain. In which next? Find a more fitting cause, shall we? It seems as if our redistribution of forces assists in the prevention of the import of illegal and illicit media into the nation has been unsuccessful, as many who have taken part in this operation have re received few orders and have suffered from a lack of morale given their menial task of observance and security. Therefore, it's time we find a more fitting cause for these brave servants of the Rex Commissariat and Rovigan, who do not deserve to be rewarded for their loyal service to the state with pathetic tasks that can be accomplished by regional and local authorities. As a result, it's time we end this current operation and place our men somewhere else. We get combat schooling instead of basic training, and uh, better organization, attack and defense, higher minimum training level, but we get more army professionalism change. Uh, hopefully, the green thing goes up. Hopefully. I love increasing your GDP. I love the GDP. It makes me feel so good. But coffee's pretty good. Especially when it's like vanilla flavored. Military factory destroyed. Ah, so be it. And just justified to Germany. As expected, the authorities in Germany have begun to question recent actions with regard to illegal media in Rox Commissariat and the Vegan. They have failed to avoid any potential diplomatic entanglements, which may be detrimental to Norway standing the Unity Pact. We must quickly move to justify our actions to the authorities in Germania. As we've sure once we've fully explained our actions and given proper justification for them. Our overlords will understand and support us in our attempts to rid Norway of such harmful materials. Yes, we must ban the harmful materials. Ban, ban, ban. If we can get to 2 billion before things really collapse, I'll be happy. Hey, it's already no November, though. Nice. Tansu is looking nice and purple. Do they always go humanist? It always seems like... I mean, I mean don't get me wrong. I love Shostakovich. I love, love, love Shostakovich, but... Hmm. I love... You know what I love about Russia? The Russian anarchy? So many different ways that things can go. Even, even a single nation usually has at least one or two alternate routes. I need to play as Governor Tortello de Levant. Nice. Justify to Germany. And then we shall do Search the Underground. Regardless of our attempts to brutally suppress the Melora, who dared challenge a rightful mandate of governance, the Bolshevik swan continue to under uh, undermine the regime through acts of intelligence gathering, sabotage, raids, and espionage. Yep. Seemingly simple act of detention cannot be applied in this circumstance, as a group operates under a cloud of anonymity. However, unquestionably loyal informants who reside in the nation's proverbial underground have identified a potential area of group occupation. As a result of such information, we shall mercilessly sweep society's underbellies till we locate these traitorous elements who continue to act counter to the wishes of society. Actually, does, did you yeah, I doubt they have unique focus tree. Oh, look, he's so happy. Chetty Jagan. You know, I'd be happy too if I was installed and just basically given the position as, like, you know, the dude of a nation. I'd probably be like, Oh, yeah, yeah, we got targets on our backs, but still. Actually, you know what? Oh, we already have this. Nice. Uh, let's grab no... Um, hmm. Recon? I don't know if we have recon on our soldiers, but we'll assume we do. We currently have a, currently, currently have a population of 3.66 million. Man, Norwegians, like... I know Nor the Scandinavia does have a massive population, but guys, you got to have more babies than that. Holy crud, 3.6 million? you you got to emphasize baby making. Oh, my goodness. A little Montgomery bust. And then close the Swedish border. The tumor of representative democracy continues to deface the European continent. Regardless of the GGR's astonishing triumph, as the Kingdom of Sweden remains intact since the establishment of a regime decades ago, anti government sub uh, subversives have exploited our seemingly lackluster authority on the vast Norwegian 
or Norwegian-Swedish border. These subversive operatives have been able to illegally invade our borders with relative comfort, conduct their pathetic activities, and then cowardly flee back into Swedish territory. To protect the nation's citizenry from the fear of terrorism, we have no choice but to permanently close and militarize our border with Sweden, thus damaging the operational capabilities of the resistance. We get less monthly population, more stability, uh, status of the Sweden... Oh! A lot of places become demilitarized zones. Nice. Very nice. Ah, civilian budget boosts. Good. Cut. Cut. Spend. The armory bust. Disaster has struck. Last night, uh, under the cover of darkness, the Millor terrorists and ambushed members of the garrison infiltrated a secure arms depot and now possess a number of our firearms. Oh no. While we are still piercing together the details, it's becoming clear that this was a meticulously planned operation with multiple saboteurs acting in concert to raid the army before local forces even knew what was happening. A veritable stockpile of firearms now rests in the hands of a resistance and several garrison's members lie dead or wounded from the attack. Police forces are investigating where the criminals have vanished to, but as most witnesses were shot, leads to the currently slow are currently slow coming. Still, the search continues, but if they manage to remain hidden, then any loyal member of the Reichs Commissariat could find themselves on the wrong end of a gun. Local media is in the region of the attack and is being censored. We must hope we can take decisive action before the populace learns of this failure. Blast! Oh, look, they win. Um, oh wait, do we get the guns? We got 900, almost 1,000. And more GDP. Oh, but we're tracking, we know, we're tracking when you're on and off. I love it when the government spies on me, because let's be real, they're probably spying on all of us. With their implementation of mandatory government transportation, it has allowed our intelligence services to be more effectively monitor our citizens. However, we should go a step further to ensure proper social cohesion and order. It's been suggested that we should take those whom happen to act somewhat suspicious into protective custody. Yet, what constitutes suspicious behavior? Well, those who choose to take an alternative route to the workplace should be investigated and placed into custody, which seems extremely fair. <laughs> By introducing more draconian laws for mild offenses, we will be able to better track our citizens' actions and ensure that nobody is willing to break the law. The status of the Swedish border. The eastern border has long been a source of uh, contention between the Reichskommissariat and the Kingdom of Sweden, but due to ongoing developments, it has evolved into a more serious matter. In opposition to our government methods, the Norwegian resistance, the Milorak, have been terrorizing the citizens of Gerson alike. Criminal and militant elements are nothing new in the Reichskommissariat, but our methods of dealing with them have become more tenuous as of late. The reasoning for this is complex, but one of the most significant contributing factors is the status of a border of Sweden. Intelligence and police forces have confirmed that the Milorak are receiving aid, financial material from across the border, and show no signs of stopping. Increase of the Swedes return only denials of malfeasance occurring. Their feigned ignorance only solidifies their suspicions that the Swedish government itself could be assisting terrorist elements within the Reichskommissariat. It's clear that action must be taken, but we're presented with a few options. We can increase police presence at the border checkpoints and double inspections to attempt to catch, to catch contraband, but this will likely only have returns on the checkpoints and border stations themselves. We could crack down on even harder and deploy garrison elements at key positions along the entire border to ensure the Millerick has no avenue of entry or exit. Such a move may make the Swedes anxious, however, and impact the relationship. Um, what do we want? If we, if we enforcing like extremely draconian laws, and they really won't like that, and Melora will not like that either. Hmm. Honestly, with showing up the checkpoints, that's going to do nothing. Like, probably that's probably not going to do anything. So, let's let's have a complete border crackdown and enforcing German literacy. The Reichskommissar was envisioned as a traditional phases for the future incorporation of various Germanic countries outside pre-war Germany into an expanded Nazi state. Yeah, this process of formal integration into the Reich can only commence once we have successfully Germanized the population as a result. In order to strengthen our ties with the Reich and hasten our eventual integration, we shall implement legislation which will force Germanization amongst the citizenry of the nation. Yep, we must start relatively slow, at least by our standards. Therefore, our first act will be to enforce German literacy amongst the population, um, uh, among the populace to better prepare them for impending integration and life directly under the German boot. They're going the wrong way. Robin, Robin Gill, an air traffic controller in Newcastle, noticed one of the dots on his screen had begun to move from the original direction quite suddenly. One moment, it had been following a straight line to the east, the next it seemed to be headed westward, or northwest, northwest. Northwest. Oh, my pronunciations are terrible. This caught his attention and immediately raised questions to his supervisor. They looked it up and got the name of the flight, Lufthansa 302, a Junker 152, flying from London to Bergen. Newcastle tried to contact Lufthansa 302 and then asked them what they were doing. Lufthansa did not respond. They tried raising the plane several more times on different frequencies that several airlines in the pack frequently use. Nothing. Lufthansa 302 could, either couldn't or refused to respond. The flight was still headed towards the northwest, a sudden change in direction, and refusal to communicate led the flight control to one conclusion. Newcastle reported to London that they believed Lufthansa 302 had been hijacked. Assailants unknown. London 
Berlin was shocked and ordered all outgoing flights temporarily halted while they tried to get a handle on how bad the situation was. Berlin was informed within the hour, and alarms went off as they tried to scramble fighters to intercept the aircraft. Lufthansa was horrified, and gave a list of people who had bought tickets, English, Germans, and of course, Big Daddy's Norwegians. Also, it was informed that some of their citizens were involved in potential hijacking. After that, they scrambled to find out where the planes were headed, trying to utilize the Luftwaffe to make contact. The pack tried to get all their diplomatic envoys and intelligence assets in Scotland and the OFN to find out what was going on. All the intelligence they had on Himmler was poured over to find a possible connection, some hint of the aircraft's plans, but they still had no idea. And all they could do was watch Lufthansa 302's dot eventually fly off the edge of Newcastle's radar, still moving to the northwest. We can only hope and wait and pray for their safety. Oh no, my cat jumped off my lap. Oh well. <sighs> the mystery of Lufthansa 302. Also, I do want to let you know, this is the last time I'm probably going to be reading about Lufthansa 302. This happens, like, any campaign that you're playing is Germany, uh, anyone in England or Nor Norway. So, this is the last time I'm actually going to be reading through this, but I still want to read through this for the last time. Hmm. After I have my coffee. The first news of the pact received, or related, related, received related to Lufthansa 302. Since it dropped off, the, the new Castle Radar was good news, or a news report in Scotland. A Junker 152 has landed in Aberdeen instead, and the hijackers are giving themselves up to the Scottish authorities. Germany immediately contacted Scotland through diplomatic channels, demanding the hijackers be deported to the pact and that the passengers and crew be allowed to return home as well. A few hours later, Scotland responded with a flat no to any extradition, and said the aircraft had been allowed to continue to fly to Bergen. When the aircraft landed in Bergen that night, the passengers were taken by the Gestapo and asked to relay everything they saw or heard. It wasn't much to go on, though. A man and a woman pulled guns out over the North Sea and demanded that the aircraft turn and go to Scotland. They didn't clear any specific affiliations with any group or make statements in support of an ideology, regrettably. Several English and Norwegian citizens had agreed to stay behind in Scotland along with them. Then came the digging through all the records. The hijackers were English citizens suspected of attempting to purchase transport through the Scottish border and were being looked at when the hijacking occurred. Many of the pact, especially on the security side, weren't satisfied. There had to be a resistant component to this, they thought. They interrogated and detained close relations with the hijackers and defectors, but they were just as shocked as everyone else. The English resistance didn't seem to step up their activity after the attack, and no other copycat hijackings occurred at the same time, as much as some didn't like it. The taking of Luton to 302 appeared to be a resort of a disprepared, disaffected English, and now part of a wider terrorist plot against the Reich. That can't be right, can it? Yes, it can be. Not bad. Not bad. And all eyes on the citizens. It's it, idyllic, you, wouldn't you say? The show four leaned back to the leather seats of the Reichskommissar's Volkswagen as they toured the scenic route back to the Stortung, the old legislative body in Norway. The sun shone as dozens of citizens stood beside the road and waved at the car and its escorts. Oh, you see the crest. It's cool. I don't fault you for thinking so. The reply came much colder than the Reichskommissar intended. Looking from his back seat window, he smiled out towards the pedestrians, but his mind was occupied with a much more serious issue. The Melora, the Norwegian resistance against the Reich's rule, has long been on the fringes of his worries, but as of late has grown bolder. Their, their ties strengthened. There's a report that they are op operating in the seas again in greater force. If they're not rooted out, it'll only be a matter of time before they try something truly brazen. The eyes passing over the citizens once more. He amused and wondered how many listen to the resistance with open ears. How many lend them shelter, who among them are in fact members of themselves? Shifting, the Reichs Commissar turned back towards the chauffeur, and surveillance efforts have been lax of late. They needed to be rectified to ensure the security of the nation. The degree of investigation, however, bears consideration. A small increase in state surveillance is necessary and won't be felt too considerably, but a dedicated task force to monitor the citizens and large increases in reporting and analysis would surely root up more dissidents. Monitor everything we can. I love Big Brother. Honestly, I don't know which way we're going to go down. I think there's a few different ways we can go down, but we'll see what happens. Ah, oh, professional arms going up. We love it. And then, German-Norwegian history. To encourage further support for administrative integration into the GGR, we must convince a population that we and the German people are one and the same. How? Now, well, how will we accomplish that goal? Simple. By placing greater emphasis on history, uh, at least our doctored version that is, by informing the population of the great and wonderful historical stories of cooperation and friendship between Germans and Norwegians over the centuries, we'll hopefully be able to convince those who are perhaps somewhat opposed to a plan of proper integration into the Reich by showing the loving and gentle relationship between our two peoples. Look at that, we go from basic literacy to primary schooling. Enforcing German literacy, Germanization. It is the ultimate purpose of the Reichskommissar system itself. And yet, even after so many decades, we get infrastructure attacked. But still, we are barely closer to achieving it than when the Kriegsmarine arrived in Norway's fjords. The primary vessel of our ongoing efforts in Norway, the German language, is to this day not in its rightful place as the lingua franca of the Scandinavian peninsula. A prime example of this phenomenon is the act of common public 
to fake being illiterate in German, ignoring German signs and documents, as well as forgetting in truth, ignoring to speak German in public spaces. When pressed, these individuals apologized, claiming that they had no time to study or that it was merely a force of habit, but to go right back to substituting their foreign tongue the very next day, evidently. According to the missive distributed by the Department of Cultural Affairs to the wider administration, enough is enough. Measures have been drafted to put the Reichskommissar's Germanization efforts back on track and to call the Norwegians bluff. A few relevant sections of the document display how the Germanization of the Norwegian passengers or speakers is about to begin in earnest. Section 4.A3, the cultural Norwegian language is hereby classified as improper speech pursuant to Aryan unity. The national German language is the only lawful mode of speech within the public forums of Reichskommissar Norwegian. Section 6.C2, all residential, commercial, and industrial zones are to remove any edifices containing or defaced by improper speech and are to be replaced with German Aryan language with no more than two weeks. Section 9.A5, Heil Hitler is to be the proper greeting by everybody. Disadvantage the disobedient. As a means of encouraging support among the populations for integration, we must send a clear message to those who dare oppose us or oppose our mandate to change. To sway the citizenry, we will exploit human psychology, regardless of race and inferiority. All humans strive to make the most of their pitiful existence and achieve happiness through highest social standing and the good living conditions. Therefore, those who are unwise enough to oppose us will be disadvantaged by the government, indirectly resulting in a loss of motivation and increasing the docile characteristics of obedience, as those affected will only reclaim what they have. What they have achieved through their acceptance of eventual integration, thereby improving conformity amongst the citizenry who desire to maintain what they have worked for. Very good. And people are killing each other, but you know what? That is of no consequence to us. Very nice. I love Oslo. And an eye on and provided by the citizenry. Or by the citizens. Oh, oh, but we'll get there once we do some of this stuff. Oh, look at this. Very nice. Land auction? Uh, say yes, please. Yes, please. I really hope that Goring does not win the Civil War. Holy cow. That'd be really bad if uh, Goring wins a civil war. Yeah. That'd be really, really bad. Really, really bad. Um, yeah, better motorized. Why not? A somewhat obedient citizenry of Reichskommissar at Norwegen may prove useful to our ability of governance as the establishment of the Third Reich. German citizens were actively encouraged by the government to play a role in state surveillance, riding out those who display forms of wrong thing to the authorities, yet, despite the seemingly harmful drop in stability in the fatherland, the system of surveillance has proven successful in identifying those who seek to challenge a government's mandate, or governing mandate. Therefore, we shall exploit the loyalty of our citizens to expose and re-educate those who may unfortunately stray from the pack and howl against the status quo of fascist national socialist domination. Kill them all with military policing, way more leader experience gain, better war support, but we lose 15% more attack. Oh boy, the status of, no of the Norwegian language. Oh man, oh man. The guidelines delivered by the Department of Cultural Affairs have been met with hesitation by the populace. While most Norwegians are more than capable of engaging in dialogue in German, several outspoken public members have said that by enforcing the German language, we will only criminalize the vulnerable among us, such as the young and uneducated. Whilst the orders are being put into effect where they can, much of the relief of the garrison administration, uh... Worry can be felt among the native populace. Conversations in German are tinged with anxiety as native Norwegians who struggle to remember words for certain concepts or situations fear to get caught asking for clarification in Norwegian by an overzealous neighbor or police officer. Additionally, several members of the Reichskommissariat's administration have expressed sympathy for those who are generally unable to speak German and believe that the Department of Cultural Affairs has taken an inefficient method of hastening the Germanization. A proposal has been brought forth to the Reichskommissar in hopes of coaxing a solution forth. The orders can remain in law yet unenforced so as to please most parties, but will slow the area of Germanization, or, however, the guidelines could continue enacting a period of withdrawal in the Norwegian populace for greater gain of catalyzing the direct commissariat's transformation into a model German colony. We're going to follow the laws. Why? Because if we keep cracking down as hard as we possibly can, that should spark, a, you know, a further response to, you know, fight us. Or, you know, for, hopefully, greater strength for the resistance. A Norwegian reinforcement's not bad. Or, German reinforcements. Oh. Let's go with Norwegian reinforcements. It's been long established that the Norwegian population is indeed loyal and supportive of the current regime, though. It's only proper that we use this to our advantage, as this average citizen could be seen as far more reliable than the occupiers, for they understand the nation and its people to a far greater degree than we ever will. Therefore, it's decided that the Norwegian citizenry will be the ones to enforce our new guidelines us rather than us Germans. Good. Very nice. Cool. Follow it up with, without Germany we are nothing. It's about time we loyal administrators of the Führer will, Führer's will acknowledge that Reichskommissariat Norwegen is nothing without the guiding hand of the GGR. If there's any attempt to flee from Germany's administrative grip, it would surely end in utter failure for our united people. Our best bet at maintaining efficiency and guaranteeing a future is to remain firmly loyal to the Reich, which has never been stronger and more united, and all, as an old saying goes. Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer, Big Daddy, Hitler. Something like that. 
And we got about 90 days left. Very nice. Very, very cool. Actually, are we, do we train? Oh, look at that. We're getting closer to 2 billion in GDP. Love it. Oh, we actually have a few. We have three factories. Look at that. Screw it. We don't need guns. Until we actually need guns, so. Uh, I'll put you right there. There you go. Cool. We are nothing. We are nothing without Germany. And then for an efficient future. Dear God, with the JGR having descended into civil war, our future is uncertain. Through thick and thin, we've tried our best to maintain the Reichs Commissariat over the past few, two decades. However, till now, we've always with the support of Germania. With our masters being no more, who knows what the future holds for us? It's best we continue as before and hope to high heaven that the recent administrative changes will ensure the preservation of our current government. We must wish for an efficient and prosperous future. Oh boy, the resignation. We got nothing without Germany. It is September 8th, so... I kind of want to get through this. We'll see what happens, because it's already 1963, and we're getting closer to, closer to October to see if the Germany is just going to fall apart. So, and I don't know how much content there is for Norway, so I kind of want to see what's going to happen next. So, yeah. We got a lot of political power, but it's disappointing that we have no decisions here. Nothing to help agricultural production or help influence the city so that it can produce more things or, you know, urbanize more, so. Alright. And so, we can't do this yet. But within a month, Germany is most likely going to be falling apart, which is something that we look forward to. Across the water. A sheen of moonlight spread across the water, forming a pale bridge between the tiny boat and the shore that lay ahead. An eerie quiet descended upon the three men. Jacob, or Jacob, glanced down at the small badge resting on his open palm, his thumb tracing the circular symbol. It was everything and nothing, a symbol of hope in an old metal pen. He looked back to his two compatriots. They pushed and pulled their oars silently, the dark of night enveloping their Waffen SS uniforms. He owed on and told his life. They had trusted him with theirs. The operation was luckily a trap, but it hadn't stopped the trio from setting out to sea in the dead of night. The anonymous tip had been a suspiciously specific detail on the exact hour of the exact night that the men guarding the southern sector of Gilmil, a Gimedi, would be mysteriously absent from the post. Milor could receive many mysterious reports, some even truthful, but as few as detailed or precise as this one. Trust nothing, suspect everything, in the black of night the rowing boat landed on the beach of the private bay. There are no signs of life, no lookouts, patrols, nothing. The three men slouched low and scurried forward through the trees, main straining to hear anything aside from the increasingly heavy breathing. Oh, infrastructure stack. Norwegian voices drifted towards them from the west and even distantly from the east. They feel all God for the first time and probably only time in his life. Jakob thanked God that he was wearing an SS uniform. Even if they were spotted in the shadows, they could simply be claimed to be new Waffen recruits. The Villa Grande, a corpse white building at the center of the property, lit the night between the trees with its glowing windows. He led Thor and Arne around the stone garden and toward its secret passageway exactly as the map had detailed. Slicing through the ground was a narrow concrete entrance ending at a small door that was unprotected. Jakob instinctively looked around him, no approaching footsteps, no chatter, no rustling, just silence. The trio crept forwards. Yako pushed the door carefully open, and the deafening thud of his heart reverberating in his ears. It swung open without resistance. They turned to his two friends with a quick smile. They were in the, be the best awaits, the beast awaits. The belly of the beast. Oh, bye, Hitler. The concrete walls of the cramped bunker seemed to close in as Yako crept onwards through the darkness. His mind drifted once more to the anonymous tip which had contained the layout of the Villa Grande. He and his compatriot had memorized it intently. They continued on past the pantry, turning left to sneak through the storage room and the servant's cellar, and before arriving at the servant's stairway, leading directly to the top. Up and up they went, their boots gently pressing against every step. At last, they reached the floor top, where a long stretch of corridor awaited them. If his memory served correctly, these were the servants' bedrooms. He inched forwards, barely breathing. The trio were uniformed, yes, but that would be enough. Would that be enough, really? Time seemed to slow down as he reached to the end of the corridor and pushed open the door, releasing a shaky breath. Jakob surveyed the kitchen, and instantly locked eyes with a small blonde man. His breathing stopped, the man froze, eyes wide in surprise, hands motionless inside the large ball of dough. Thor and Arnie suddenly pushed back Jakob and strode towards the exit on the far side of the kitchen. The chest puffed up in feigned arrogance. Jakob followed their lead, glaring at the cook with intensity. A look of dread spread across the man's deathly pale face, and he averted his gaze, continuing to knead. Jakob felt a pang of sickness in the pit of his stomach. As he left the kitchen and made his way past the central spiral staircase, leading to the floor below, he suspects, he suspects nothing. Let him live in the floor. Sleep has elevated him. He paced back and forth past the rows of bookshelves, soaking in the words before him. Works of fiction had caught his attention lately, and he had found himself drifting away from journals of great Norwegian polar adventurers and delving into the tales of fancy. Even as he scanned the sentences before him, he felt his mind wandering to the past. The winds of fate had swept up many men throughout the 20th century, lifting them to greatness for unforetold. Not Vidkung... Oh, Quisling. Oh, look. They exploded. Nice. Uh... Uh... 
Uh, yeah, not Vid Kun Quisling. He'd been tossed aside like a puppet without strings, destined to lay motionless in his mansion for the rest of his days. Oh, how certain he'd been of his future. He remembered the chilly wind sweeping out of his face as he distributed food aid for the famished peasants of Russia. With the evils of Bolshevism bared before him, he swore to protect his nation from the same fate, only to open the gates to the German thugs who taunted him with promises of power while stomping on the face of Norway. Paranoia had gripped him for many years. Resistance movements, schemers within, and national shambling. The Germans themselves, every day he feared the cold embrace of death would seize him or his wife Maria over time, though. The grizzled old loyalists and the four god were being replaced by those dead-eyed waffen as youngsters gifted by the administration. The four god was stationed to keep dangers out of the Villa Grande. The waffen as he suspected, were there to keep quizzling in. A restrictive mansion or a luxury prison. And unfortunately, just a wooden door. Shall we gather for schnapps and cigars tomorrow? A muffled voice arose from the staircase. Jakob's heart leapt into his mouth. The chances are very good. Oh, oh my goodness. I apologize for all this stuff. Uh, the chances are very good, came a distant reply. Thor cursed softly, wiping his forehead. Jakob's throat was so dry he could barely swallow. The trio moved onwards a quicker pay, at a quicker pace, strutting past the white walls of the great dining hall. The Villa Grande was just as grandiose on the inside as it had been on the outside. Jakob remembered a phrase his mother had once told him and smiled. It is the most beautiful places that house the ugliest beast at the hand of the hall. A library door awaited them, bright light streaming out from underneath. Just a wooden door stood between them and the target. He gave a reassuring nod to his friends. Arnie replied with a grimace and a stiff thumbs up, while the Thor grunted in acknowledgement and wiped more sweat from his throat. Head. Thor and his Thor head. Jakob pulled from the badge and kissed it gently. The time has come. The forehead. Quilzing tried reading the same sentence three times differently before realizing the futility of staying awake. His mind had already drifted to thoughts of slipping back into bed beside his wife and drifting into his dreamless sleep. As if on cue, the door opened behind him, and three Valfin guards strode into the room, dragging their dirty boots upon his library floor. How dare you? Quizzing snapped. Slamming his book down, he stormed towards the three men. No one is to enter my private library. He could feel the sudden hot tears welling up in his eyes. Do I not even have this? The guard in front silently pulled out a badge and handed it to Quizzling. He glanced at it in bleary eye confusion. It displayed a large O containing a small V adorned with a crown. His blood turned to ice. He looked up and shocked to see a silenced pistol straight aiming at him. Oh, Quizzling muttered. The muzzle flashed a blinding light and delivered him into darkness. Evig Og Throw. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh, Austin is not looking good either. Oh boy. Oh boy. Please, Goring, die. Quizzling is dead. Grief has swept the nation of Norway. Or the ex commissariat, no vegan. Uh, Vidkun Quizzling, the four of Nation National Sumling, the former head of state, was found murdered in the early hours of the morning by one of his servants. Reports state that he was discovered with two bullets wounds to his head in the library of the Villa Grande, his personal residence in. Vjorvika. Pinned to his bathrobe was a badge of royal authority, a symbol and calling card of the brutal Milorg terrorists. How the murderers were able to infiltrate its highest security residence is as of yet unknown. Speaking on behalf of his grieving parliamentarians, Pell Bolton's praised Quisling's strong presence in Norwegian politics. The brutal murder of Vidkun Quisling, a figure of stability throughout the last two decades, provides a chilling reminder that the nation must embrace unity over division. Only by rejecting such senseless violence can be worked on work on healing our scars and creating a better Norway. Earlier today, the General Secretary of National Sandling, Gullbrand Lunda, reminisced about the past and radio address. I recall the early days of our party and the powerful national spirit that emanated from its fjord. His love for the Norwegian people and bravery in the face of the growing threat of Bolshevism in the East was an inspiration to all of us. Chief of the Police and Ministry of Security, Jonas Lai, or Lee, discovered a brief statement in which he swore to bring these butchers to justice. All of our resources will be put into investigating Quisling's death. I promise to the Norwegian people that the murderers will be caught, prosecuted, and Hang for the crimes. The 76 year old Vidkun Quisling leaves behind a widow, Maria Quisling. This newspaper and the nation as a whole mourns with her. National unity united in grief. Oh boy. Oh, look at that. Um, Burgundian system. <gasps> Hans Hauga. Oh, I can't wait to see what happens. Go, bomb, and go. Kill Goring, please. For the love of God, kill Goring. Oh, Himmler. I said he plays Himmler, England. Hmm. Unfortunately, Poland's not yet lost. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. So I want to wait and see what happens with their focus. Once we finish it first, so. Night Vision is pretty nice. Man, I wish I had Night Vision. Let's get some more soft attack, and let's grab some more Defense and Breakthrough. Africa Shield. Ah, we hit it 2 billion before we ended the episode. Nice. Military Factory uh, destroyed. Oh, Republic of Ukraine. Look at that. Uh, do you guys have Focus Streets at all? Oh, yeah, you do. Well, you are the AODNSDAP. You guys release the Berserkers, yeah. Oh! I've got to play as Austin sometime. I really, really, really need to play like 16 different ways of Austin. 
for an efficient future. The resignation. Two decades, two whole decades of his life been dedicated to running Reich's Commissariat in the beginning without question and without complaint. How easy it must have been for the like Henrik Loss to rule over Austin without the heavy restrictions set upon the administration of Joseph Tebowen. Tebowen took off his spectacles and rubbed his eyes with a heavy sigh since the outbreak of the horrific civil war in Germany. He had been plagued with bouts of panic attacks and unending nightmares. They think that Aryan brothers were slaughtering each other on the altar of their leader's hubris made him sick to his stomach, the thousand year Reich collapsing into bloodshed and destruction after just thirty years. The Reich's Commissar placed his glasses back on and frowned in deep thought. The entire garrison was sitting aimlessly in the Norwegian snow like children stranded from their parents. Norway had seen two decades of Germanization. A national Salming was desperate to fully seize power and establish her nation as an independent but loyal member of the pact. Why deny them this opportunity? Was this not the perfect moment to herald such a drastic change? Durbovin lifted up a pen and started to write. He had to take matters into his own hands. The time had come to dissolve the Reich's Commissariat, transition power to Goldbrand Lunda, and return the garrison to the Reich. Which soldier joined which faction of the Civil War was of no interest to him? It was time to come home. The Burger Creek awaits us all. Oh, boy. Wait, so there's one of two options will happen. 60% chance of join Bormann's Germany. 40% chance of join Speer's Germany. Okay, so this is this is talking about, like, Max Joseph Pemsel. Oh, was Paul Klatt. So instead of a professional army, we get political interference, which is going to hurt us. And we've got, we're back with Norway with an interregnum. Which, does that do anything for us? Well, I'm not really sure that's going to do anything for us, but the results of our change... Uh, let's, let's read this one, and maybe we'll end it there, and we'll see what happens. From our lofty perch, we have seen the black clouds gather, but only now do we hear the thunders roar. The death of Hitler has upended any hope of our ship of state, continuing its course unimpeded. And in truth, none can say what the future of Norway holds. Although the Reich tears itself apart at the seams, and the guidance of Germany already choked with blood, and this is only the beginning. Calls and messages come in from the hills line of the successors hourly, ordering, threatening, and pleading for support. Though, in truth, we have no safe harbor to turn to, or harbor to turn to. We lie adrift in the storm with naught but our efforts to show for it. We must hope that our work in recent months will keep us afloat. Our actions in codifying our national language, tackling extent propaganda, and monitoring the border should work to reduce any subversive acts in this turbulent era. The last thing we desire are uh, subversive acts in this turbulent era. The last, the last thing we desire are those who seek more of people in the future. Further, our implementation of recent investments into our transportation network and wider economy will hopefully manage to keep us in one peace during this period. Though for how long, none could say. We must hope the bloodbath on the continent resolves itself quickly, for without Germany, there's no, there stands no power we can safely and readily anchor ourselves to. Ultimately. The results of our reforms may be critical to Norway's future, even if we cannot see what they may be. For now, there's little to do but to wait, watch, and learn firsthand how quickly so-called brothers will fall upon each other like wolves. We pray that whatever emerges from this crucible is no more horrific than what is made in this first place. Hold fast or be dragged below. Does this change anything here yet? Oh, uh, maybe not. Um, oh, infrastructure attacked. I have a feeling things are going to explode here. Oh, South Africa is definitely going to explode, but we've gone pretty f for a while for the first episode in this video. Campaign. Oh, mainstream victory. There we go. The dissolution of Reich's Commissariat in the beginning was heralded the seizure of power by the National Sammling. A powerful powerful political force has spent the last two decades collaborating with the German overlords. The power vacuum caused by the flight of Turboven and his administration has been fulfilled by Goldbrand Lund, the party's general secretary, a political veteran. Blunder was appointed to the NS government during the Second World War. His promotion to the party status quo and desire to respect its fascist origins has brought him to pro prominence as leader of the moderate faction, which can now exercise its pol policies free from German influence. May it guide us into a bright new future. Nice. Does that give us a focus tree, though? God, I want to play as this nation. And, oh, man, that guy. That guy. Every time I see him, Mr. Milk, Milch. He's got a just, he's like Kaida Mundi from, like, Star Wars. That's such a big forehead. I'm sorry. Who are you? A little handsome. A little handsome. Um, so, well, we're still fascist. So, we'll see what happens. And we're not in any sort of uh, faction, so... Guess this. Oh, look at that. There's things going on down there. Hopefully, something will happen, but I think we might end it here. If there's another episode after this, obviously, you'll know. If not, then this is pretty much it. Hopefully, this is not it, because I'd like to continue to see what Norway has in store. But if you enjoyed the video, nonetheless, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, either in the next video in this campaign or in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.